Now, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, bandsaws. We have two of them in the shop, and they each have two entirely different purposes. This is what we would call the resaw. This has a three-quarter inch blade on it, and it's primarily set up to do nothing but resawing, where you um, reduce the thickness of a piece of wood by running it uh, through uh, the bandsaw. Now, um, it has a fence that is movable, so you can change the distance from the fence to the blade, so you can set it up for whatever thickness you want to cut. Now, as with uh, all bandsaws, there's several adjustments on it. This is a knob that would change the height of the guard. Once you've changed the height, then you would simply turn it back and lock it in place. Uh, you want the, the guard to be down within a couple of inches of the top of your workpiece. So you have a minimum amount of blade between the stops. There are uh, mechanisms in here that have captured the blade both at the top and at the bottom. The bottom one is not adjustable, but the top one is by moving the entire guard up and down so you can change the amount of blade that's exposed. Um, like uh, most of the saws in the shop, there is a power disconnect and you would leave that off um, when you're not actually operating the saw. Just before you're ready to turn the saw on, then you'd go over to the disconnect and turn it on. And then you would be able to turn the machine on here with the on off switch. Um, there is a, a dust collector attached to it. So when you're operating this machine, you would also go over and turn on the dust collector as we've discussed in previous videos. Uh, this machine does have a brake where you can step on this lever uh, after you've turned it off and then it will stop the blade from moving quicker. Uh, if it just runs down, it will take um, quite a while for the blade to stop moving. So you can apply the brake and that will stop it uh, quicker. Um, students won't be involved in changing belts or blades on this saw, so we're not going to cover that in this video. This is just about all that you would need to know about the machine. Now at the end of the day, when it's time to clean up, one of the things that you would do would be open this lower drawer and uh, clean out any sawdust that might have accumulated um, in during the course of operation for the day. So that's about it on the, uh, the large three-quarter inch bladed uh, bandsaw. Now this is the other bandsaw that we have in the shop. This is uh, always equipped with a smaller quarter inch wide blade. This is the bandsaw that we would use to actually cut curves. Um, it operates essentially the same way as the other one does. This is the, the lock for the, the blade guard. And again, you do it the same way. You would lower that guard down to within an inch or two of the top of the material that you're cutting simply to cut down the amount of blade that's exposed. Uh, both of these saws, you can tilt the, uh, the tabletop to cut at an angle, but that's generally something that we don't do. Your uh, on-off switches are here. It also has the quick disconnect in the back that you would turn on just prior to use. Now, uh, it would be cleaned the same way you would open the doors and vacuum out any sawdust that the dust collector didn't um, take care of that day. Now, you will use uh, these videos on the bandsaws along with the written material in the uh, manual. Um, and in the manual, there is a, uh, a graph, not a graph, but a, an illustration of uh, the 
minimum diameter circle that you can cut with different widths of blades from eighth inch all the way up to one inch, I believe. Now, the wider the blade, the larger the minimum circle you can cut. So with the project that you're trying to cut, uh, you need to be aware of how tight a radius you need to turn to cut out your project and then refer to that um, illustration to see whether or not the blade that you have is going to be able to cut that minimum diameter. Um, we're not going to go over it on the video uh, because you have it in the written material. But I will say this, uh, I guarantee you there will be at least one question on your test about the minimum diameters and the blade thickness. So I highly advise you to pay attention when you come to that uh, illustration in the written material. And that just about covers the, the bandsaws.